say first off, we're glad to have our guests with us tonight. Service. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. This is uh, Potter's Wheel. Uh, where we're going to study the word of the Lord this evening. Praise God. We have good resurrection Sunday. And uh, I hope that everybody was blessed and, and got strength from the Lord. Amen. Amen. We took communion. And uh, praise God. Remember the what Jesus did for us. Amen. Sir. Praise God. <clears throat> We're living in some uh, very fast paced times where things are happening and uh, I believe that the Lord Jesus his second coming is so very near and uh, I'm glad you're here tonight. It speaks that you want to be ready. Amen. You want to be close to the Lord and uh, anticipate the, the soon return of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get started uh, this evening with a word of prayer. <clears throat> we ask the Lord to touch us. And if you'll join me, we'll pray. Praise God. Glory. Lord Jesus, this evening. Lord, once again, we are assembled here in your name. Praise God. We acknowledge your presence here right now. Great God, we love you this evening. And we're grateful, Lord, for you being in our lives. And we're grateful to be here tonight. Thank you so much for all your goodness towards us. My Lord, I thank you for keeping us and, and bringing us together again. Great God, that we must study your word this evening, God. I pray that you will move by your spirit. Lord, for this is bigger than what a man can do. It's your spirit that does the work in our hearts to help us walk with you and live for you. And we need that tonight. Amen. I ask you, Lord, tonight to touch us by the word of the Lord. And, and Lord, let something be said that's going to help your people walk with you. In the perilous times that we live in, help us to stay true and faithful yeah. to you. And not only be true and faithful, but be soul winners for you. Lights for you in this world of darkness. God, I do pray you'll touch our visitors tonight and bless them. And great God Almighty, would you, Lord, I pray that you'd give me grace to minister now your word. And touch not only this congregation, but in all places where men are calling upon your name and the truth, Lord. Bless their services. Let your people be fed in Jesus' name. Praise God. Before we get into the word of the Lord, we're going to ask Sister Emily to come, and she's going to make a few announcements. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This microphone went out. No. It's okay. Um, April, okay, so Thursday, not Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of this week, we are going to be in revival with Brother Shane Brixner, um, Friday at 7. Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 10 a.m. with no Sunday school. Uh, we are going to be serving a luncheon after service, so uh, please be prepared to bring a covered dish, food item, dessert, um, anything of that sort. Um, then Saturday, April 17th, we're having a youth bake sale at the Belton Feed and Supply from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then at the end of the month, Thursday, April 29th through Saturday, May 1st is Texas Men's Conference. Registration is $65 uh, per person at the door. If you have questions about that, see Brother John. And there's not going to be any men's fellowship this month due to men's conference. Um, so a few things left for the month, but the most important one coming up is we have revival this weekend. So please keep that in mind. Please be here for it and please be inviting people out to it going to be an awesome time. Amen. 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 Praise God. For those on uh, Facebook that didn't hear that, uh, you can get on our web page and uh, find out the announcements there, but especially remember starting this Friday evening, uh, we have revival starting. And it's going to be really good. And I look across this congregation this evening, I see 
so many men, and I'm grateful to the ladies being here too. But you know, when I got in church, I got in church back in uh, just a little after 1979. And church was consisted of a lot of ladies Amen. during that time. Yes. And it's just good to see good godly men love the Lord and draw near to the Lord. Uh, you know, it takes a real man to live for God. Amen. It really does. It takes yeah. a real man. And uh, I don't know, back in those days, I'm afraid that a lot of men thought it was a sign of weakness if you went to church. But the truth of the matter is, it's easy to be a sinner. Yeah. That's right. You know, oh, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's easy to, to, to not take a stand, you know, and live righteously in an ungodly world. Right. You know, uh, so I'm glad to be one of his, and I want to live for him. I'm glad that there's men today, uh, as well as great young ladies that want to live for God and stand for righteousness and truth. Amen? Sure. Amen. That's why I'm here. There's an old song that they used to sing in the, one of the, the chorus. I think it was the chorus. But it says, the reason I'm in this church is I don't want to be lost. Amen. I don't want to be lost when Jesus comes. And that's why I want to be in this church. Amen? Amen? And when I say this church, I'm not talking about just this congregation. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus' church. Amen? Amen? Praise God. I don't want to be lost. And I'm not afraid of hearing the truth. I want to hear the truth, don't you? Yes. I, praise God. Amen. But, so we're going to look into the word of the Lord. Now, last Wednesday, I deviated from what we've been talking about. And I talked about uh, communion because we were going to receive communion on Sunday and I wanted people to understand and prepare their hearts uh, for receiving the communion, taking communion. And I believe it was a very serious thing. Uh, everything that Jesus taught us to do needs to be done in sincerity and in truth sure. and godliness. And uh, so... I took the time to last Wednesday to, to cover that territory. We're going to kind of go back to where we were this past two weeks before then, I believe. Uh, we had uh, been talking about this topic. And so we're going to turn to Jude. That's the little one chapter book right before the book of Revelation in your New Testament. And we're going to read. Uh, some of these scriptures in Jude. Jude had uh, mentioned that it was necessary for him uh, to write unto God's people because there were uh, certain men that were crept in and they were turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. And uh, that's speaking of I believe using the grace of God uh, as an excuse uh, to, to sin. Yeah. Amen. Using it as an excuse. You, you know, there are actually some people under the guise of Christianity that will tell you uh, it doesn't matter how you live uh, because we're saved by grace. Right. You know. But Paul said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And then he answered it by saying, God forbid. Right. Absolutely not. Grace is not a license uh, to sin. It is true that we are saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves is the gift of God. <clears throat> but we are also, if you keep reading there, it says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We're not saved by our good works, but we are saved unto good works. Right. And if we don't pursue good works, we are counted as unbelievers. True. That's true. Amen. Right. Amen. See, having faith means you not only mentally believe, but your belief in Jesus moves you to obey him. 
That's what it means to have Bible faith. It is definitely true that we are saved by grace, grace being the unmerited favor of God, and it's not what we deserve. If I got what I deserved, uh, I would be lost right now. But I have turned from the old man that I was, and I have turned to Jesus, and I hope you have too, and that you're striving to walk and please him. Have you ever failed him? I'm sure I have many times probably, but I'm here to tell you that I, I am headed a different direction than what I used to have. Amen? And he is a God that forgives. Uh, Paul, or John said it like this, shall, you know, little children, I write unto you that you sin not, uh, but if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he's the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Right. Amen. Don't sin. If you find yourself that you have sinned, take it to Jesus. Don't continue living in it. Amen. But repent of it. Ask his forgiveness and the blood that washed you uh, when you first believed and was baptized in Jesus' name is the same blood that will keep you washed. Amen. Sure. Yeah. Praise God. It will keep you clean. And I've had to ask God numerous times in my years of walking with the Lord. To ask, I've had to ask him, Lord, please forgive me. I messed up. You know, I I've, I've did something that Maybe it was a bad attitude. I when I got drunk anymore, I hadn't been smoking dope or shooting drugs or anything or being unfaithful to my wife. But there's sometimes, listen to me, uh, you know, Jesus even said it's the things that's within a man that defile the man. Yeah. The things the things that come out of him or the things that defile him because they come from the heart. Jesus even listed the evil eye in there. Yeah, right. <laughs> Did you know that? He listed the evil eye. You know, sometimes you don't have to say nothing, but you can give people a look. And if your heart was, and your heart's being read there, you know, you might have a little bit of bitterness or hatred or you got to watch those things, you know. So those things needed to be repented of. And I'll tell you something. If I ever struggle with anything, it's probably my attitude sometimes. <laughs> you know, get tired of putting up with somebody that annoys you. And you probably feel that way too, don't you? Praise God. I didn't get no confessions out of that one, but anyway, <laughs> praise God. But there's been times I had to ask the Lord to forgive me. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this is where we're looking. Uh, there's people that have crept in. Jesus says that have tur they've turned the grace of God into lasciviousness, using it to live sinful lives. Uh, as an excuse to live sinful lives right. and not come out, you know, from among them and be separate. So this is where we're picking up. He's talking to the Christians here in Jude 1 and 5 after mentioning uh, about the turning the grace of God into less genius and warning about it. He says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. See, a lot of people had actually gotten out of Egypt. Right. You know? That's like, that's a picture of, of a life getting out of sin. And they were headed to the promised land. But a lot of them failed God between coming out of Egypt and getting to the promised land. You know, and he destroyed those that believed. Now, there was times where they murmured uh, about the water situation. There was times that uh, Moses, when Moses went up on Mount Sinai, he was up there for a long time, 40 days. And the Lord spoke to him and said, get, get down real quick. The people have corrupted themselves. They made themselves a golden calf, you know, and, and they were doing like a lot of people do today. They were, whenever Aaron made that golden calf for them out of their jewelry, right. you know, they proclaimed uh, a celebration to the Lord. Right. You know, that's what they did. And a lot of people like to mix God with sinful activities, but I'm going to tell you, God was hot at them. Yeah. And uh, 
he destroyed a bunch of them. Remember one time they were complaining about Moses. And, uh, you know, the Lord was angry at them complaining about uh, Moses. You know, as if Moses was the one leading them. He was leading them, but it was God giving him the instructions. So when they were complaining about him, they were complaining about God. And so God sent fiery serpents in them. They started biting them. They started dying like flies. You know? And uh, the people came to Moses and they, they got repentant at that time. And you know what? God told him to take a brazen serpent, put it on a pole, and everybody, and so anybody looks on the brazen serpent, uh, when they look upon it, uh, they shall be healed. But what brought them to, to what brought God to giving them a remedy? Uh, was their repentance, their confession. We, we've sinned, you know. God does recognize true repentance. So he afterward destroyed some of the people that came out of Egypt. He destroyed them that believed not. They failed to continue to believe. As they went into the promised land, you know, they sent spies, 12 spies. 10 came back with an unbelieving report, causing the whole bunch to wander in the wilderness. For 40 years, a day, a year for each day that they had went into the land. But later, uh, God took them over, a new generation, after the old generation died out. And uh, so what is he trying to say here? He's trying to explain to them that grace is not a license to live wrong. He's trying to say, you know, yes, we're saved by grace. But listen to me. We, we need to walk with God. We need to live for God. Amen. He expects us to. It's our reasonable service. Amen. It's the least that we can do. If, if he died for us, we should live for him. Absolutely. Amen. And that means coming out of sin and pursuing the things that please him. So I want you to listen to the points that Jude is trying to make here. He, the next verse says, and this is a verse that I want you to really pay close attention to because we're going to reflect back on it as we go through these uh, scriptures. He goes on to say, after talking about the people coming out of Egypt, and the angels, he reflects on the angels, which kept not their first estate. And he's talking about the, the angels that were at one time in heaven you know that one time the devil wasn't the devil? That's true. And all the demons were not demons. They were angels at one time. They were holy angels at one time. And evidently, angels have the ability to make choices as well. Mm -hmm. Because it says right here, the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation... He hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. In other words, these beings were in heaven. But being there at one point did not keep them there. Right? This is not a once saved, always saved religion. You know, you come to the place of an altar, wherever that altar is at for you, and you repent of your sins, and and uh, you, God fills you with the Holy Ghost. You baptize in Jesus' name. That's what the plan of salvation is. Peter said it on the day of Pentecost. Upon believing in Jesus, we repent of our sins. That, would mean, that means we kind of ask God's forgiveness for sinning. And, and at that point, we make an about face and turn to him. Right. And, and, and upon uh, doing that, our faith has brought us to that. It's going to lead us to water baptism in Jesus' name. Peter said, be baptized in every one of you. In the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God back in our life. By one man's sin entered to the world and death by sin. Jesus came and gave his life so we can be reconciled to God. God is that Holy Spirit. Amen. That Holy Ghost baptism is reconciliation. Man being reconciled to God. Amen. Where sin caused God to be out of our lives. Now through the blood of Jesus, God will come back into our lives. That's what Jesus is all about. Amen. And so, 
He doesn't want us to continue to live a life of sin. He wants us to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, like it says about in Titus. That's what the Lord, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. What's that mean? The grace of God that brings salvation. Jesus was the grace of God. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He, he was the grace of God extended to a world that was lost. And his crucifixion is a teacher. Yes. The wages of sin is death. It teaches us that we should deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Jesus died because we sinned. In other words, what it's supposed to teach us is the wages of sin. Look at Jesus on the cross. The wages of sin is death. Right. It cost Jesus his life to get it out of our lives. Mm -hmm. It's a teacher. So should we continue living sinful lives? No, absolutely not. We need to live soberly, righteously, and godly now. Amen? Amen. Well, I like that kind of preaching. Amen. <laughs> I may not say it as good as somebody else, but that's what the Word says. Amen. Amen. I said that's what the Word says. Right. Praise God. And that's what Jude is trying to to minister here to these folks, the angels that did not keep, that kept not their first estate, God made them and placed them in a position. They left that position. Amen. And that's something that I want to bring out here. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get there, but I hope you remember this scripture right here. Because God placed them in a position, in a place. And they left that place. What is the, what is, what is the action that proceeded forth, forth from them that when they did that? Does anybody got the word? Uh, one word. It's called rebellion. Yes. It's called rebellion. Uh, you know, rebellion comes in different sizes, but it's still the same substance. Right, yes. It's still the same thing. Whether it's a, somebody murdered or somebody... You know, or somebody lying, or just simply Eve taking that forbidden fruit. It's the same thing. And a lot of times people look at it as a piece of fruit. You mean God would kick them out of our garden because of a piece of fruit? No, he kicked them out of the garden because they were rebellious. That action that came from them was not obedience. See, obedience and rebellion are two different things. God, the way we show God we love him scripturally is if we obey him. Amen. So their very act of eating of the forbidden fruit was an expression of a lack of love for God. Right? Right? Yeah. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, I mean, we're getting down to the brass tacks of it, but that's the truth. <clears throat> if they had stayed away from that forbidden tree, they would have been expressing to God... I love you more than my own desires. Because yes. they wouldn't have ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil if they hadn't desired it. That's right. And you got desires too. And when you choose to obey God instead of following those desires and things you want to do, you're expressing to God, God, I love you. I love you more than my own will. More than what I want to do. Yeah. See, God could have every one of us Holler an uncle. He could. Yeah. But he's, he wants you to love him. That's what God is looking for. I was talking to one of my sons the other day. He was talking about it, you know. And a few days back, actually, a couple of weeks ago. And he was. Wondering, why does this evil get to exist? Why does it get to exist? You know? And the truth of the matter is, if there was an evil, there would be no choice. Right. Yeah. And if there was no choice, there would be no expression of love to God. Amen. You understand that? Yeah. 
is this is what I told him. We got three things that we struggle with in this life right here. We got the world that's in a fallen state, sin. We got the devil. He's called the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in the children of this immediate. In fact, the Bible calls him the God of this world, right. little G. He's a fallen angel. You know, got kicked out of heaven. And he hates God. Yeah. And he hates you. And then we got the biggest problem in our life is our flesh nature, fallen nature. Yeah. And we have all those things we contend with in this life right here. And that's why Jesus said, if you want to be his disciple, you got to be willing to die daily. Yes. To take up your cross and follow him. So he's talking about dying. He's not talking about physically dying. He's talking about dying out to your the weak nature that you have you struggle with. Right. Dying out to the to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. For every one of us have that to deal with. Right. And that will not be eradicated until the rapture takes place and this mortal puts on immortality. We got that to struggle with. You think that's gonna go away? No, you got to conquer it. Amen. you got to conquer it. Everyone, even the guy preaching to you, has that weakness to contend with. Paul said, I die daily, lest that by any means while I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Preachers are not exempt. we got the same stuff in us that you're made up of. Sure. And we have access to the same power that you have access to. We're not super beings above anybody. We're just people with a job to do. That's what a preacher is. People with a responsibility to preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. Made of the same material. Made of the same weak stuff. If we don't pray, we're as weak as anybody else that don't pray. If we don't fast, we're as weak as anybody else that don't fast. Right. Amen? Amen. So we got these enemies, these three things. The Bible lists them, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. In fact, John said it like this, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. You know what you love, you embrace, don't you? Yeah. Right. Huh? Come on. So he's saying, don't embrace the world. Yeah, reach for souls. And we're talking about reach, not loving the world. He's not talking about not loving people. Right. He's talking about the stuff of the fallen nature of the devil. The stuff, the activity that the world is involving itself in that keeps them away from God. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, guess what? It's not in him. For all that's in the world, here's what we're dealing with. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, me. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth, not talks about it, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I want to abide forever, don't you? Yeah. Come on, I want to abide forever. If it, if it requires me to get this old guy under subjection, guess what? I must make it. Yeah. I must get it under subjection. I must. Amen. Because I don't go to heaven without getting under subjection. Right. Amen. We, I don't want to turn the grace of God into a, a lasciviousness. Amen. I don't want to use what Jesus did for me to die, to get rid of my sins, to continue to live in a life of sin. Amen. Amen. We shouldn't do that. Amen. I think it's very offensive to him. After what he did for us to get that stuff out of our lives, for us to willfully sin after, after what he has done, we need to recognize, we need to acknowledge sin and turn from it. Amen? Stay turned from it. Right. Amen. And yes, I believe if you have failed, I believe that God is a forgiver. I do believe that. I believe that God will, if you truly repent of your sins, if you truly Go to God. And he reads our hearts. Right. If he sees your heart, the thought and the intent of your heart, and he sees a, a, a repentance heart there, 
a grief that I've offended God. You know, that I've done something to offend God. And I, I need your forgiveness, Lord. A broken and contrite heart, he will no wise despise. He won't cast it out. Amen. Praise God. He'll forgive. And he'll cleanse. Though your sins be as scarlet, they should be white as snow. Amen. 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 Praise God. But anyway, I want you to remember this because this is what I'm trying to talk about. And I'm not, not getting very far tonight on what I want to talk about. The angels which kept not their first estate. What did they do? They left the place that God put them in. Did you know every one of us had been put in a place? And I'm talking this evening specifically about whether we are male or female. We are, we didn't become what we are by accident. Our generation needs to hear this. I'm preaching about it because our world is sick right now. Amen. It's very, very sick. And they're getting away from the thing that God has orchestrated. Amen. God made every man. If you're biologically a man, don't be confused. You are a man. Yeah. Don't think otherwise. You are a man. And biologically, if you're a woman, God sent you into this world as a woman. That's right. You are a woman. Amen. Don't question it. You're not the opposite sex. Amen. And if you think otherwise and you pursue otherwise, you'll fall into the same category as these angels. Right. See, God sent you into this world being who you are. That's right. The person male or female who you are right. amen and you know what you need to do instead of trying to be the opposite sex you need to concentrate on being what you biologically are right. and being the best for God that you can be amen. amen praise God so he says the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation they've suffered punishment haven't they he has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Then he says, the next verse says, even as, even as, that reflects back on the verse we just read, right? right. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, we know who they are, don't we? They're known for perversion, aren't they? Yeah. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, here it is again, in like manner, even as and in like manner, this is a, ref a reflection on the verse before, the angels that left their first estate. Okay? Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, sexual impurities. Amen? Going after strange flesh. This is the one I ended up with two weeks ago whenever I was finishing up. I didn't actually get finished. Going after strange flesh. <clears throat> Amen. That strange flesh that they were going after. I don't have the scripture before me, but you can look back in Genesis and find out where it talks about Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. There came two angels to Sodom in the, in the evening. God had sent them there. They came because God was going to overthrow the city. And he was sending those men. Abraham had pleaded all the way down to, I think it was 10 souls. If there's 10 in the city, we just spare the city. And God said, I'll spare it for 10. He started with 50. And Abraham's interceding and pleading. God, he, he knew Lot was in there, his nephew. Yeah. He knew Lot and Lot's family. You know? And the Bible called Lot a righteous man. Yeah. Though he didn't seem very righteous to me, but it called him a righteous man. Dwelling among those people of that city. The city was eat up with perversion yeah. and corruption. Amen. And those angels went there and they were going to stay in the street and lot, having a conscience towards God, yeah. said, No, he knew what the city was like. Yeah. If I let these men stay outside, 
He's thinking inside us that they're going to be molested. Yeah. Amen. They look like men, but the truth of the matter is they were actually angels. Yeah. To human beings, they were considered strange flesh. Yeah. You understand? They were considered strange flesh. Amen. And so Lot talked them into staying and prepared for them and took care of them and and, and then in the night, the men of the city came and began to beat down, beat on the door. Send those men out that came into the city with you. And, 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 and they wasn't just wanting to get to know them in the sense of, hey, I'm Joe and, and you're Fred, huh? They, they wasn't, when they said, they cried out to Lot, send those men out that we might know them. Right. Amen. They wanted to know them sexually. Yeah. They wanted to molest them. They were full of perversion and wickedness. Amen. Praise God. And Lot said to them, Brethren, do not so wickedly. That's what he said. So we know it wasn't just a handshake they were wanting. They were wanting to do something very wicked. And so Lot even offered those men outside his door his daughters. They already, no doubt, already knew who his daughters were. They were wanting to molest something. They were wanting to, to, to rape. Pretty strong word to use. But that's what they were wanting to do. Amen. And then they threatened Lot. Right. We'll do worse to you if we get a hold to you. Amen. And the angels smote them with blindness. And the Bible says they still couldn't find the door. They were still trying to get to the door to get in. How wicked Kind of remind me of people of our day. All these things going on in the world and they're still failing to believe that there's a God that's fixing to come. Yeah. Wake up. Open your eyes. Jesus is coming. Amen. He's going to judge this wicked and corrupt world that we're living in if people do not repent. Amen. I'm preaching like this because people need to get out of the life of sin. Yeah. Amen. You hear People need to come out and give their lives to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, these people in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, it says they were giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh representing those angels are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God bring fire and brimstone down on them after he got Lot out. And Jesus said, like it was in the days of Lot, that's the way it's going to be in the coming of the Son of Man. I want you to know something. Before the Lord brings the wrath of God upon this world, He's going to get the church out of here. Yeah. Come on, He's going to get Lot out of Sodom. Amen? Yeah, that's right. And that's what He did. And He told Lot's family, when those angels began to take them out, He said, don't look back. But unfortunately, His wife looked back. And turn into a pillar of salt. And Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. What's he say that for? No. He, yeah. he said that for us. Yeah. Don't look back. You think you see things happening? Listen to me. Get your attention off of this world. This thing's wrapping up. Yeah. Come on. Get your attention on Jesus. Get your own attention on things above, not on the things in the earth. Amen. Quit trying to put your eggs in this basket. Amen. This Amen. this world speaks in the wide up, folks. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And those that are living for the Lord are the ones that's going to get out of here. Yeah. Oh, praise God. I'm not trying to fit into the world. I'm trying to fit into God's program. And you know what? I want to be where He's called me. I want to be doing what he's called me to do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. The angels that didn't keep their first estate. Remember, don't you remember that? They left their habitation. Amen. There's so many people so mixed up. People that you would not even think would go wacky. Amen. Are going plumb nuts. Men trying to be women and women trying to be men. Yeah. They don't even know which bathroom to go in anymore. Right. You hear me? Our world is spiritually sick. Amen. 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 
Amen. Our world is sick. And the reason why it's sick is because it's left its position. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This right here will tell you how to live. Yes. Amen. It'll tell you what is right and what is wrong. Our designer tells us. Amen. It's not an accident who you are. You are. Amen. Who God sent into the world. Yes, you need renewed and revived spiritually. But you are, if you're a male, you need to realize that you are a male. It's weird to, to have to preach that. But I'm here to tell you, it's needed in our generation. And if you're a woman, you need to be a woman. Amen? And stay in the place that God gives you. Some people think that God's word is chauvinistic. He's not chauvinistic. God is a God that puts people in places. Right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. I was thinking about this earlier while we're on this topic. I, I'm going to run out of time if I'm not careful. But I was thinking about this sometime, a couple of days ago. And uh, to show you what God is doing, maybe an example uh, would help you to understand that God does not love men more than he loves women. And he doesn't love women more than he loves men. But he wants a man to be a man. And he wants a woman to be a woman. Right. He created them with a purpose. Mm -hmm. You hear me? He created them. And when they step outside of that place that God created them, they are bringing trouble their way. Amen. But I got to thinking about, I, do y'all love the police officers? I love police officers. Yeah. I know they're not all good. I know. But do you know what the Bible teaches? I believe that it teaches that they are God's ministers, yeah. uh, you know, tending to what they do. Right. That does not mean that they are saved. Right. It means they are God's ministers in the sense that they have a job to do, and yes, they can be they can be evil. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. They can be evil, but I want you to know something. Overall, uh, police officers are not what a lot of people are painting them as. Right. I thank God for the police officers, yeah, whether it's the sheriff, whether it's the local police. I know there's bad apples. There's bad preachers. There are. That don't mean every preacher's bad, though. Right. Yeah. You understand? There's good and bad doctors. Yeah. But anyway, back to the police officer. I'm glad for him. You know what? If the booger man comes around my house, and I'm going to try my best to uh, not use lethal force to get him out of there or caught, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call. I, I'll be calling the sheriff because I live in the country. And the local sure. cops won't come my way. <laughs> but I'm going to call the sheriff. Yeah. Sheriff, I got a booger man, you know, sneaking around my property. And uh, he's trying to get in the window. Or he's trying to steal stuff. And, right. you know, I'm going to call him. You know what? I, I'm i grateful for him. I'm grateful to him there, aren't you? Amen. The overall purpose of them is to keep evil subdued. Right. That's right. I don't like evil. I like good. Because God's good. Amen? Amen. I want to be on God's team. And I want, uh, I, I want to recognize the things uh, you know, that, that God has put in place. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Now, if I go down the highway and I speed, and I, there's laws in the land, folks. And you know what? That police officer's there uh, to, to keep everybody uh, safe. Huh? To keep everyone safe. Yeah, to keep everyone safe. But he's there. To keep people following the rules. He is. It's for public safety. I know you've got arguments about some of that. And some of it is excess, maybe. You know? Some of them you abuse their power, no doubt. I'm sure. I've already said that. But anyway, I thank God for police officers. Then again, there are fire departments in there. Praise God. I'm great. Are you thankful for fire departments? Yeah. Yes. I'm thankful for fire departments. I'm glad that we got fire, uh, the fire department, the, the, the people that 
I want you to know something. If my house was to catch fire, my barn was to catch fire or something, guess what? Right. You know, I'm going to call the fire department. I'm going to dial 911 and say, Could, listen, I, I live at so-and-so address, and, and I, I need the fire department to get out here fast. Right. You know, I got a fire. You know what? I'm not going to call the police. Right. I'm not going to call the police. You know why? Because the police uh, are not put into position to put out my fire. Right. That's right. Oh, they got some handcuffs. Yeah. They can come and handcuff me, but when I'm in a house that's burning with fire, I don't want them to handcuff me. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be able to get out of that house, don't you? Amen. Praise God. But when somebody is trying to break in my house or something, guess what? I'm not going to call the fire department. Right. Yeah. You know? Both of those people, I love both of them. But you know who I'm going to call if somebody's trying to break in my house? I'm going to call the police. Right. That's right. Right? Amen. Both of those positions, you know, are places, position, I believe, that God has in our community right. to help things work good and be safe. Just, you know, and I love them all, and don't you? Yeah. I love both of them. They're, I see a need for both of them. Yeah. But you know what? I don't want the one to be the other, right. and I don't want the other to be the other one. Right. That's right. Because they're not trained to do that. They're not equipped to do what the other one's job is. Amen? That's right. I don't want to be speeding down the road and have a fire truck come by I me, mean, pull me over, and try to give me a ticket. Right. That's right. You laugh at that, but you know why? Because that's not his job. That's yeah. right. He's trying. He's usurping his authority. His authority is in another place, right. and that's the way the home life is. The the God made a man and He made a woman. Amen. Praise God. And they're both loved by God. Right. But, but they're not supposed to swap sides. Amen? Right. God made them for a particular purpose and a particular cause. Both of them are as important as the other one. Yeah. Amen. Just like the fire department and the police force. Both Amen. of them are just as important. Amen. But somehow, some of them get to thinking that I need to be the other one. No, you need to face who you are and be who you are yeah. and what you are. Amen? And be the best that you can be. Amen. Amen. That's what these angels got in trouble for. Amen. They didn't keep their first estate, but they left their own habitation. And because of that, they faced judgment. Amen. They faced the judgment of God. Amen. Praise God. That's the things that we're dealing with in our generation right now. <clears throat> Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, 18, I beheld Satan like lightning fall from heaven. God so hates that that he cast Satan out of heaven at the speed of light. Yeah. Amen. At the speed of light because he left his own Place. Yes. He exalted himself above the throne of God, tried to. Amen. I'll be like the most high. God's not going to put up with that. Amen. God so hates the one trying to move over to the place of the other that he instituted teachings in the Word of God. Right. Amen. Deuteronomy 22 5 says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto the man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, right. for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Right. God says, it's detestable to me for even for you to wear the opposite sex's clothing. Yeah. Amen. That's what it says. It's, that's what an abomination is. It's something that is detestable to God. Yeah. You say, oh, that's, that is a... That's an Old Testament scripture. It is an Old Testament. But even in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10, the Lord teaches a man to cut his hair. And it teaches a woman not to be cutting her hair. Amen. And it says in, in 1 Corinthians 11 and 10, For this cause ought the woman to have power, referencing her long hair, on her head. Listen to me. You got the reason why? Because of the angels. What's he talking about? The angels. What we're talking about in Jude. Right. He, he starts at that chapter 
And he says, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of the, uh, the woman is the man. He's talking about the place, the positions that God put them in. And God says, okay, men, don't you be having womanish hair. Womanish hair. Right. Amen. Because when you have womanish hair, you're taking the place of the place of the woman. And when the woman cuts her hair off, she's taking the place of the man. Amen. Right. Amen. And a lot of people think, oh, that don't matter. That's just uh, something that was made up back in Bible days. I want you to know something. It's a declaration of whether or not a person is obedient to God or not. Right. Do you stay in your place? Yeah. That's why that, that teaching is in the Word of God. Because of the angels. Oh, somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Because of the angels. The angels which kept not their first estate. He is reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. The hair deal. Amen. There's things that God instituted in his word that people minimize, and they should not do that. Right. Eve minimized the importance of staying away from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She listened to the serpent. Oh, you shall not surely die. Amen? Yeah. Right. Praise God. But you know what? She got the whole human race in trouble by disobeying God and eating that forbidden fruit. As minimal as men may think it is, if God said it, it's important. Okay. Amen? If God said it, it's important to do. Praise God. Here we have a hair issue. And God says, for men to, to cut their hair. He also says in, in Deuteronomy, don't wear the opposite sex as a parable. You know, he's distinguishing the difference. Amen. And you know what? Have you noticed how our world wants to get away from that? Yeah. I want you to know, the world is under the uh, expressions of the prince of the darkness of this world. Amen? Yeah. Yes. And I want you to know something. God said, I've divided the light from the darkness. We talked about that. Remember that? Yeah. He divided the light from the darkness. Praise God. And people look at it and just say, oh, God's not going to send me to hell for having a long woman to share. I know a lot of people that call themselves Christians that have long hair. Yeah. And they talk about God all the time. Well, I'm sure the angels talked about God all the time too, but they got kicked out of heaven. God wants us to obey him. And it's through obeying him, whether we think it's a little thing or a big thing. God wants us to obey him. And if we don't obey him, it's no different than Adam and Eve eating of that forbidden fruit. It's no different. It's the same spirit of disobedience. Amen. Yeah. God wants us to obey him. That's how we tell God we love him. And not because it's grievous. This is the love of God. That we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. I want to do this. You know, because God wants me to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put on a dress. <laughs> and you laugh at that. You laugh at that. But the truth of the matter, if you go to any bathroom in our city and you look at the sign on the door, it will show you what men wear and what women wear. That's right. And I say this facetiously, in our country, women are the only ones that can't cross-dress. If I came in here and tried to preach to you with a dress on, I would hope you'd walk out. Oh, yes. But there's many women coming with what's on the male bathroom door yeah. into gatherings, and they don't think nothing of it. You know why? Because society has accepted it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean God accepts it. That's right. You understand? That doesn't mean God accepts it. That's right. Amen. It's not always the majority. Right. Amen. In fact, Jesus said, Fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's not the masses. It's not the masses that want to go over 
to into the promised land, it was two out of 12. The other 10 caused everybody else to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And the Bible says, be holy, for he is holy. Be holy in body and in spirit. Paul said, I would that your whole uh, spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. The whole man. And yes, yes, cleanse first that which, was, which, which is within the cup, cup and platter, that the outside may be clean also. It will just come along when the inside gets right. Amen. Amen. The whole man is what the Lord is interested in. The whole man. I tell you, my time is up. I'm a little bit over. And it's hard to stop. There's so much scripture that starts pouring in my mind. Amen. But there's a call. It says, Be not unequal yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what concord has Christ with the law? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Amen. What, has the te- what part hath the temple of God with idols? You are the temple of the living God. Wherefore, in other words, because of this, you're God's, he's living in you. Amen. Wherefore, come you out from among them and be you separate and touch not the unclean thing. That's the forbidden thing. And I will receive you. I'll be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters. Saith the Lord God Almighty. Having therefore these promises. Dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves. From all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness. In the fear of God. Amen. Amen. That's not a call to stay what you once was. That's a call to come out and walk in his marvelous light. Yeah. Come on. Come on. We're a chosen generation. We're a royal priesthood. Praise God. He's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. Stan, I won't be able to quit if I don't just quit. But I hope, I hope that I've gotten across to you. Amen. Praise God. Be what God made you to be. If you go into the restrooms, amen, if you biologically are a man, you are a man. That's right. Don't try to be the female. Right. You'll get yourself in trouble with God. If you're a female, don't. Whatever you are biologically, don't try to be a male. Stay in your place with God. Amen. Amen. And be the best of whichever one you are that you can be. Because you're just like that police and like that firefighter. You're important and you're loved the same. There's no difference. Male or female. God loves us all the same. But he did put us in a place. Amen. And we need to stay in that place and honor God in that place. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us, Lord, to be assembled in your name this evening. God, in having the time to study your word, I pray something's been said that's going to help somebody live for you, walk with you today. Oh, I believe your coming draws near. Jesus, we want to be ready. We want to walk with you. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Help us, Jesus. Help all these that are here tonight and those that listen by way of Technology, Facebook, whatever the cause, whatever the method is, but God help us live for you. Yes. Great God, and if there's any that have found themselves in these positions that we've preached about tonight, help them, God, yes. to repent. Oh, God, such were some of us and some of these things. Great God, but we've been washed and sanctified and justified. I know you love sinners. We've all been sinners, Lord. Oh, God, but help us from now on to turn to you, to live for you, and walk with you. And God, honor you with our, our lives. Great God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I want-